Hey, traders and investors, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth for a daily market recap. Today is Friday, February 19th. Hope everyone is doing well. In today's video, we're going to discuss DMG blockchain solutions as our stock of the day. And we'll go over some market news, headlines and events. And then we'll go over, I'm going to do a video, a shorter video today. I'm going to do everything uh, cannabis all in one video. So we'll look at the broader market, we'll look at crypto, and we'll look at the chart for DMGI and the overall broader market and some individual tickers as well. Before we jump in, make sure to hit the like and subscribe to the channel. So DMG, they are a mining company, so you can check out their website here, but they're a diversified cryptocurrency and blockchain platform company that is focused on two primary opportunities in the sector, mining public blockchains and applying personalized blockchain technology. So they focus on mining Bitcoin, providing hosting services for industrial mining clients, earning revenues from block rewards and transaction fees, and developing data and analytic forensic software products, working with auditors, law firms, etc. So stock hit all-time highs today, and so did Hive. So we saw a lot of profit-taking coming out of Riot and going into the smaller crypto miners and blockchain stocks. But we'll look at the chart on that in just a second. So Yellen calls for more stimulus. And what I think is going to happen next week is we're likely just going to melt up. So we also saw that Bitcoin hits 1 trillion in market value as cryptocurrency surge continues. I think the overall uh, market of the crypto market hit 1.7 trillion, but Bitcoin itself broke above 1 trillion faster than Google and Amazon. Now I think the sixth largest asset in the world. We also saw Canadian cannabis sales bounce back strongly in December. So StatsCan came out with the updated numbers. It fell last month in November. Um, October, we set another record, 270, up from 257. Then we declined to 261. Then we came in at 298 million for December. That's a lot of dollars. I did my part, that's for sure. <laughs> I spent a lot of money on cannabis in December. Let me know if you did your part. So we'll move on to DMGI blockchain solutions. All time highs, all time high weekly record close. You can see here we had the previous all time high at $1.98. Then we had this run to $2.43. We consolidated on the weekly, found a perfect support entry off EMA 12, which has been rock solid for all of these high risk assets like crypto, uh, blockchain names, you name it. So huge, huge move off of that weekly higher low and EMA 12 support test. So congrats to the bulls. We are seeing some bearish RSI divergence though with lower lows and lower highs on the RSI here on the weekly while we're trending to higher highs. But when we're in blue sky breakouts and max euphoria, RSI matters less when we're going up. When it does matter and when it will matter is when we're hourly oversold. So we haven't consolidated on the hourly in a meaningful way since all the way down here at around 214. And we have a mini tiny higher low here at 266. So even if we were to pull back just to the 266, we're still in an hourly uptrend. We could pull back 30%. That is pretty wild to think about. So we'll be, we'll be eyeing hourly oversold conditions and five minute oversold conditions. And that's when RSI can come into play when you see these high euphoria and high hyped names and blue sky coming off all time highs. We'll look for those hourly oversold bounces and five minute oversold should provide good entries and quick flips for a day trade. We have EMA 12 down here at 329 ish and three 279 is the EMA 26. So if we do start to consolidate on the hourly, look for a potential bottom around those levels. But at this point, we're seeing increasing bull volume, close near the high of the day, not that much profit taking into the weekend. So it looks like sentiment for the overall crypto sector is bullish. And you can see here Bitcoin setting new all time highs. Ethereum new all time highs, but consolidating and pretty much every, every crypto right now is running hundreds and hundreds of percent max euphoria. It will end eventually, but for now bulls are in complete control. 
So we'll move on a little faster here. DMGI on the weekly. So we bounce perfectly off the 10 week moving average and we've gone vertical and parabolic. The stochastic crossed bullish here into the end of the week and the MACD is blasting off here as well. So all systems go here on the weekly, on the moving averages on the weekly. We had the 50 and the 100 and the 200 bull cross and they're all just just absolutely vertical. That is insane. Congrats to any bulls in this name. Hive was another one. We'll just bring up Hive real quick. I had a similar setup. See here the 50 crosses through the 100 and the 200, but that just happened. So we'll see if we get, I think we're, we close at an all time high on Hive as well. I think we're going to see a lot more upside next week in both those names. And we have earnings coming up for Hive. March 2nd is the date. So on the daily time frame, we're well above the 5100 and the 200. The MACD is extremely bullish here as well. So no red flags and absolute full bulls. And looking at the daily chart, as long as we maintain these higher lows on the hourly and the daily, there's no harm done. So we need to break that pattern of a higher low every daily candle, every hourly candle. Once we break, if you're wondering where you should take profit, maybe you wait for a break of the previous low. So if the first hour of trading on Monday, if we break the low of this candle, 367, maybe you bail and you look for a re-entry around 326. Maybe you scale in, maybe you enter at 330, 326, uh, 280, $3. You know, there's multiple ways you could do it. You could scale in in three orders, five orders. But eventually, we know that once daily consolidation starts to come into play, we're a long ways away down from our last daily higher low, we could drop 67%. So again, I've reiterated this time and time again with multiple different stocks. Uh, Blackberry was one of them, went from $28 to $10 or $11. So over 50% of its value, yes, it's okay to hold long term and this isn't buy or sell recommendation, it's for entertainment purposes only. But if you're kicking yourself after a huge move, well, maybe you want to at least take some profit. Me personally, I would be setting a stop loss and looking to reload cheaper. So on the weekly, we held the weekly VWAP as well. So held a 10 week moving average, the weekly VWAP, and nice entry there on that weekly consolidation with very little risk. So once again, congrats to the bulls. Taking a look at SPY today, SPY on the weekly, we closed red. So notable weakness after coming off of new all-time highs. We know that consolidation is going to happen eventually, uh, but we held key supports today. So we had the weekly uh, low from last week at 387.50. We got to 387.74, so we held key support. We avoided weekly consolidation, and we avoided a loss of the daily uptrend. But now we have a lower high here on SPY, so now we have to hold the low here at 387.74 and 387.50, lose 387.50 and we confirm daily downtrends and a possibility here of a head and shoulders. Something like that, I know I got a lot of lines on this chart. Keep deleting them and they keep coming back, not sure why TradingView is doing that. So we could see a little bit of a head and shoulders action here so we'll keep an eye out for a potential daily downtrend confirming next week. But bulls held EMA 12 into the end of the week. So that is a bullish sign. But I want to point out on the hourly here as well with extended hours on, we had the low, we had the high, higher low, higher high, confirmed an hourly uptrend. But we came down, lost those supports. We are holding 387.50, which is the key support. But we're now back... We're not, we're flat essentially at this point. We're not in an uptrend, we're not in a downtrend. So now we're scouting another hourly higher low compared to 387.75, but this is likely favoring a type of equilibrium. And that makes sense where, because next week we have stimulus that's supposed to pass on Friday potentially. So it wouldn't be entirely surprising that we saw a potential break to the upside after that equilibrium, or it could go the other way essentially to the downside, we'll have to wait and see. So pretty much all names 
doing the same thing, QQQ, same deal pretty much. So we'll move through this a little faster. On the other hand, the US dollar has set an hourly uptrend and is looking for an hourly higher low off EMA 12 here. We are now closed until Sunday evening. So taking a look, IWM closed up 2% today, so that was notable. We saw some money and rotating, funds rotating out of things like MJ and the electric vehicle space going into airliners and recovery stocks. So we'll watch for that rotation of capital and where it goes, but IWM two, up 2% 2 while the tech sector was weak, down almost half a percent. And we had, let's just take a look at SMH. So Semiconductor was up over 2%. So Semiconductor was weak the last few days along with QQQ, but seeing a notable boost here today. And taking a look at TAN, the solar sector up over 2%. But again, possible daily bear flag here and a risk of a daily downtrend with an EMA in 12 and 26 bear cross. So be cautious of that. Oil started daily consolidation. I mentioned in my video yesterday, ironically enough, uh, XLE was leading the charge here for the longest time, but we started daily consolidation yesterday. And I said that might be an early clue into US oil doing the same. And then sure enough, uh, at the beginning of this daily candle, we broke the low of the previous daily candle and started daily consolidation, but we're looking to find support here off EMA 12. So that's going to be crucial. If we lose that, we have support down here at 57.43. But if we lose the daily uptrend, weekly consolidation will most likely be underway and then we'll scale to weekly higher low, but we don't have a clear weekly higher low support off from all the way down at 33.67. And it's funny where we topped out. The all-time high resistance downtrend line, we've never closed above it on any monthly chart in its existence. Not saying that we can't, but the odds are in the favor of the bears that we're likely going to pull back here and set a monthly higher low at some point before breaking through. But with that being said, we are getting tight here. But we could see an EMA 12 and 26 bull cross as well, which could propel us even further. So not ruling that out. We're not overbought on the monthly. The economy is improving, but we'll have to just wait and see. We are overbought on the weekly here. And on this weekly candle, we are seeing a little bit of a bearish reversal here with an upper wick. So maybe we need to, this is setting up for a weekly bar. Um, it's setting up that we could potentially open the next weekly bar and lose that support. And then we would scout potential higher lows here come on the EMA. So we could look at EMA 12 around 52 and then EMA 26 at 47. So keeping an eye on US oil. So gold and silver, silver. So pretty big range on the day there. We broke to a lower low and we broke to a higher high. We broke the high of yesterday, I should say, and then we broke the low. So not really getting any clear direction there. And same with gold. Broke to uh, broke the high of yesterday, broke the low, but no real clear direction. But we did close the day green on gold and silver. So XBI biotech sector up 1.62%. So money was clearly leaving big tech and going into other sectors, but XBI, again, daily bear flag, topping out at EMA 12, upper wick, not looking the greatest. XHB, home builders ETF was strong, XLE. So we had a daily inside bar, it looks like, that we'll be watching and tightening range. XLF up 1.9% or 1.2% essentially. And we are at all time highs. So money definitely rotating out of big tech and healthcare was down over 1% today. And this could be a clue here as well. We're seeing EMA 12 and 26 bear crosses on XLV and we're losing the daily uptrend here. We had the low, high, higher, low, higher, high. Now we just lost that higher low. We have support down at 114.05. That'll be important, but this could be a little bit of a clue. So the more names that follow XLV, the more downside that we can anticipate. 
So moving on, Apple, I did want to bring up Apple on the weekly chart. This video is going to be a little bit longer. I'll put some timestamps in here as well. Uh, but doing a little bit of a deeper dive here because it is the end of the week. Apple closed below the 10 week moving average and the stochastic is bearish and the MACD is bearish. So watch out for some potential selling pressure next week on Apple. And let's just take a quick peek at Tesla. Tesla held its, no it did not. We had the 10 week moving average at 785.84 and we closed at 781.30. MACD and stochastic are very bearish and we just had a bear cross here on the MACD. So we could be heading much lower on Tesla. We have no weekly support from all the way down here to about just under $400. So it's almost a 50% drop. Obviously we got daily supports and, and whatnot, but be super cautious out there on Apple and Tesla next week and tech in general. But we did hold EMA 12 there. So we'll see how we open pre-market on Monday. But on the bear list, we had OPK, DFLY, BYND, KHC, Facebook, Amazon. On the bull list, we had Riot, C-Web, BLU, Fiverr, Space, and KLA. Riot, a lot of money was leaving Riot and likely going into those smaller caps, but it just seems like a lot of interest and hype are very much alive in these miners. But right now, Riot is a daily bull flag. Get a mini higher low, but I wouldn't really consider that much of a higher low pivot point. So we did see a significant pullback from the $80 level. We pulled back over 25%, but we need to break the high of the previous daily candle to be confident that there is more upside. So we'll take a look at CGC on the weekly. So we are consolidating. And we had a huge upper wick and bearish reversal candle here from last week. But we'll see if bulls can save it. We need to change the daily trend back to an uptrend. And so far, we've done the opposite. We're now in a daily downtrend. I did a video on this yesterday if you want to see a little bit more. But we failed to close above EMA 26 as well. So that's notable. But got to run through this a little quicker today. So we don't want to see that many names confirm daily downtrends. The more names that confirm daily downtrends, the more... Uh, blood we can expect to see in the sector, but daily inside bars were on the table for most names today, if not all names. ACB broke its daily inside bar, bearish, so that might be a clue that we could see that happen with other names. But again, we need to see if it's just Aurora and on Monday we stay range bound or we break bull, then it'll obviously be something that we can ignore. But the more names that break bearish will continue to any names that we're invested in will continue to watch for the potential for those names as well because of the sector momentum and direction. So Afria inside bar, CGC inside bar, Cron inside bar, Hexo inside bar. And just taking a look, ACB lost the uptrend but never confirmed a downtrend. APHA still in a daily uptrend holding EMA 12. CGC couldn't even close above EMA 26. Cron resistance at EMA 12, but closed below. So a little bit weaker than APHA, but stronger than CGC. Hexo, same as Afria, still in a daily uptrend holding EMA 12. So Hexo and Afria are, I would say, at the top of my list. And uh, funny that that is the case because we just had a news article posted in our community and it was Hexo versus Afria, Pepsi versus Coke, who will win in the end? So you can check that out. But pretty funny that uh, they were comparing Hexo to Coke and Afria to Pepsi. And we're seeing Hexo and Afria as the strongest of most of those names of the tier ones. TLRY weaker, so inside bar as well, but closed in between, sandwich in between EMA 12 and 26. So. Watch those daily inside bars, VFF, inside bar held above EMA 12, again, stronger than most names, still in a daily uptrend and very similar to Afria and Hexo. OGI, daily inside bar. That was pretty difficult to guess. So moving on, MSOS, we saw some dip buying today and a potential, we did break the low though. We had the low at 50.01 and we had 49.57. 
but this could be a potential bull flag. And on the daily, we did confirm a daily downtrend. If you want to argue and say that wasn't a big enough of a bounce, I wouldn't argue with you and say that we're still just scouting a daily higher low compared to 4033 based on how bullish we've been. Um, I, I wouldn't argue with that. So I guess you could say that we're, we're still in an uptrend and we're looking, scouting for a higher low compared to 4033. CNBC was pumping MJ today saying that the safe and uplisting could happen. So the descheduling and safe uplisting to major exchanges for US MSOs could happen in 2021. So likely why we saw a push there end of day. And we, we saw a little bit of volume there coming in, but we did change the hourly trend with a low, high, higher, low, and higher high. So daily higher lows look set. And we could see an EMA 12 and 26 bull cross going into next week. And we did break the high of yesterday. So daily bounce is underway. New daily higher low is set here at 49.57. So we'll look at resistance at 53.45 and then all time high 55.91. Congrats to the bulls. Let me know if you're swinging any MJ in the comments below. Let's just take a look at the bull and bear list. So we have BAM it's down, broke their its daily inside bars and closed at 93 VREO. And Ian leading the bear list on the bull list. We had Terrasen, Harv, and Bioharvest. So just taking a quick look at some of the big US MSOs. So inside bar still on CL. Cura broke bull, but then ultimately ended back up within that range. GTII inside bar. And taking a look at True Leaf inside bar, but all holding EMA 12. So that is a positive sign. So not expecting any major shifts in capital from US, from Canadian to US at this time. I am starting to slowly shift focus from Canadian over to US. But until we see US uplisting, uh, we could run up obviously on anticipation and pricing in of the SAFE Act coming out here in the next few months potentially uh, or this year. But just keep in mind that once we see uplisting, we'll probably start to see the amount of capital leave the Canadian tickers because they're listed on the NASDAQ and the NYSE on major exchange, uh, major listed exchanges and higher access to capital, institutional interests, et cetera. So we're, we're going to see a shift from high capital in high, you know, this, these huge, huge billions of dollars traded in Sundial and Canopy uh, that will soon be dispersed amongst both the US MSOs and the Canadian LPs. And there will be a lot more opportunity for day trading and just liquidity and overall, you know, just volume and being able to fill a price uh, at market and not, you know, be able to put 10 grand or 100 grand or a mil even a million dollars into a name and not see the price spike up as a result of that market buy. So watching that shift, but no clear signs of it yet. So MMED, the shroom play, not a whole lot of hype right now in the shrooms, but holding holding him at 12 here as well. So could potentially see a cup and handle up to 647 all time high. So we'll be watching the shroom space as we know, eventually hype will re-enter but holding EMA 12 on the daily from the low here, we have a higher low and higher high. We're back in a daily uptrend, just looking for another daily higher low. So it looks like weekly higher lows are set down here off EMA 12. So we'll be keeping a close eye. Earnings are coming up, it looks like, in April. So a little bit of ways away yet. But that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. And like I said, I did everything in one video today. Make sure to leave a comment below. Let me know if you're swinging any MJ. Are you bullish or bearish on US or Canadian? Which one do you think is going to see the most gains from here until maybe say the summer? So with that, thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth for a daily market recap. I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. I know I'm exhausted and I'm looking forward to some downtime. I am going to be working on a few projects though. 
uh, likely probably working on a course and hopefully get a course rolled out here in the near future for a lot of our members. I know a lot of our members are asking for a course and a lot of people on YouTube uh, were commenting, asking as well. So that is a work in progress. Stay tuned. Have a great weekend. Take care and we shall see you next week.